Now we move into early medieval art, and we're really covering the same time frame that we covered with the Byzantine and with Islam, except that we're moving back into Europe. Now, that means we have to deal with, very quickly, the fall of Rome. As all of these barbarian groups, the Goths, the Vandals, the Visigoths, move across Europe, they're running from the Huns, uh, who are coming from the Far East. And as they do so, the Romans see this as an invasion. They constantly try and fight back. The Roman economy has self-destructed at this point. It's a barter economy. There's really no value to their money. And the West falls in 476. So what happens is, just like in any case of a power vacuum, all of these areas, especially in Western Europe, basically subdivide amongst the so-called barbarian groups. And it's going to take time for those groups to consolidate into Europe as we know it today. And we're going to be dealing with a couple of things in this chapter, a couple of different areas. Uh, specifically Ireland. Ireland is going to be key because most of Western civilization, including arguments are made uh, the Bible being included in that is central to maintaining all of Western literature because up here there's a tradition that we'll talk about and it's extremely isolated. Uh, there's no good easy way from Europe to Ireland that doesn't involve an incredibly dangerous sea crossing. It's also isolated from England, whereas England to France is about 20 miles. Now, we're going to be dealing with Ireland, we're going to be dealing with England, uh, the Vikings, as well as Charlemagne, and basically Central Europe, Germany, parts of France, etc. As we start out, we're going to be in Ireland. Now, the Celts are a civilization that begin in the Black Sea and are pushed out. This is a migrant group that's moving across Europe. They will be the Gauls, for the most part, when they uh, when Caesar fights them in France. They will also be the Celts when they're in England, Scotland, and Ireland. They're a pre-Christian nomadic society with no written tradition, but a very strong artistic and technical tradition. Uh, precious objects tended to be functional as well as portable. And our story starts with Irish monks. So these monks will seek the British Isles as a refuge and end up in Ireland, about as isolated as you can be in Europe. Now, Ireland will be Christianized by St. Patrick in 432, although Irish liturgical practices will vary vastly from Rome because they're so isolated. So what's going to happen is... The Irish church, for example, allows female priests, allows married priests, allows married and female bishops, abbots, etc. There's a lot of differences between what we see elsewhere and what we see in Ireland. But this doesn't last forever. Uh, eventually, the Irish will actually go to uh, Rome and let the Romans know what's going on. Rome is not happy with this, and we'll see a reform. Uh, Irish monks practice a different form of, or really practice in a different form of monastery. Uh, generally, these monks are anchorites. So in other words, they live in these individual huts, uh, just like I'm standing in front of here. And what they do to pass the time is they copy books. This is going to be very, very important for the Irish. They're copying not only the Bible, and there are arguments made that we would have lost the Bible if it weren't for the Irish copying it, but they're also copying the works of Aristotle and just about everything else they can get their hands on. By 563, St. Columba will establish a monastery at Doral, and by 635, there are monks from uh, Ireland traveling uh, not only to set up monasteries at Lindisfarna, but then traveling to Rome. And they're going to travel back into Europe, bringing this new knowledge with them, uh, these new books with them. 
And this, the Irish will be central to our story up until we get to the Vikings around the 8th century. But let's get into some of this Celtic artwork. <laughs> 